you may have heard of the whistleblower Edward Snowden. But why are his revelations so important? They have these internal mechanisms, but too often they serve as a means of entrapment rather than protecting the whistleblower. Like in the case of Tom Drake, he went through every conceivable internal channel to blow the whistle. And not only did they fail to redress his concerns about government surveillance, they turned around and prosecuted him under the Espionage Act. And then they, the U.S. has a gall to say, Snowden should have gone through internal channels. Well, guess what? Edward Snowden has said very publicly that he watched closely the cases of two of my other clients, Tom Drake and Bill Binney, and saw how they were treated and made his decisions accordingly to go to the media. What it means to have freedom, what it means, is incredibly precious. I wake up every morning, I did in my hotel here in Berlin, which was the former eastern part of Berlin, right? Saying, I'm free. I can't begin to tell you what that means. That's a state of being. How dare anybody take that away? What, for the sake of an extraordinarily small percentage of people that would wish to do us harm? We're willing to compromise the fundamental underpinnings of our own individual sovereignty, our own freedom, our own liberties, our own privacy? Can never take it for granted. So we're about to hear Snowden. He's, and I'm acknowledging Snowden, because I always hoped that Snowden would come along because the system had metastasized over the years since I blew the whistle with the fuller documentation. And he's attributed his moral agency, the choices he made, the conviction of his own conscience to me and others. Remember, I, I was severely restricted. I was in my own country. He knew he had to leave the United States to have any hope of keeping his freedom. And I realize the ironies of history are not lost on me. It was Russia that granted him asylum. He's probably safer in Russia than he is anywhere else. Those freedoms matter. But see, he, he, he's a millennial. He's at the very, very, he's on the very beginning of the millennial generation. He lives the digital age. The United States is more vulnerable to attacks uh, that undermine our actual systems than any other nation in the world because we simply have more computerized systems to be attacked. Uh, and ones of greater complexity, ones that would have greater impact if they failed. And yet at this same period, they're saying, well, we need to weaken security, not make it stronger. How do we deal with that? This is a question that rather than me saying what we should do about it, I think it's more important for you, everyone in the audience, to think, what is the right answer here? And more importantly, what will you say about it? It's not enough to think about these things. It's not enough to believe in something. You have to actually stand for something. You have to actually say something. You have to actually risk something if you want things to get better.